It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Yeah! Super cool. How about that? Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... Yes! ..and valiant losers. Blast it! Will it be the high road to glory... <laughs> ..or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Not half. Ahoy there, and welcome to a wonderfully sunny Surrey. What a glorious day for a county crossing adventure in a classic 2ZB. Looking extra stylish in their matching shades are best buddies Margie Cooper and Raj Bisram. <laughs> well, today is a beautiful day. We've got the roof off. Yeah, we're having a lovely time. I think perhaps too lovely a time. Maybe, maybe it's I too much. I think you're having too much fun. Nonsense. There's no such thing. With three auctions firmly in the rear view mirror, today marks the penultimate leg of our duo's trip. Any advice for each other? My experience of the road trip, if you buy something for 100 quid, you're far better to buy two things for 50 quid, I think. You think so? Yeah. I don't yeah. believe you. I think that's just a trick. <laughs> You're just tricking me all the time. <laughs> Can't say she didn't try. What's the difference between us, then? Quite a lot. Three figures. At least £100. Oh. Hey, let's check, shall we? Raj has increased his £200 pot to a respectable £336 and a couple of pennies. But at the last auction, Margie streaked ahead, giving her just over £431 in her piggy. That means there's £95 between them. You were down from oh. the very start, and look oh. at the comeback you've made. Oh, the comeback queen. There's no pressure on you whatsoever. Listen, I'm nowhere near the winning post. We've got two auctions. Yeah. It's all to play for, love. Let's remind ourselves of their route. After starting out in Eastbourne, our duo have motored their way around the country lanes of the southeast of England with the intention of ending up at an auction in Exeter. On this leg, they'll finish up in the cathedral city of Winchester. First, though, we kick off the shopping in Bramley. Time for Raj to get to work. Thank you, thank you, Margie. All I can say is... Have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs> I'm going to have a great time. Bye for now. With £336 burning a hole in his pocket, Raj is heading for Memories Antiques. And with such a wide selection of items from around the globe, there's bound to be something here that catches his eye. And what's this? Chocolates? These are lovely old print blocks. And these print blocks are very, very Indian. There's a whole bowl of them that are very, very different. And there's an elephant here with a typical Indian design. Lovely, lovely detail. And these blocks would have been stamped into ink or paint and then used on the saris or the cloth or whatever they were using. Ticket price is £12 each. One possibility. That one here is a peacock. Again, these are all emblems of India. The peacock, the elephant and the Raj. <laughs> Very funny. Let's leave him searching and catch up with Cheshire's Margie Cooper. She's headed south across the West Sussex border to Petworth. Situated in the South Downs National Park, the small town is home to her first shop of the leg. Though antique -er, Margie will be looking for more past than present, I fancy. And there's plenty of old things to tempt her to part with some of her dosh. She's got over 430, remember? Oh, canny one. Ah, uh, who's a good boy, then? Oh, that's well executed, isn't it? She's got a good name, Marjorie Cox. <laughs> And that's Joey in 1977. That's really well done, isn't it? 
That's a little Jack Russell, I think, isn't it? I'm almost certain that Marjorie Cox did some painting for the Queen. Marjorie Cox was commissioned by the keeper of the Queen's dogs to paint several of the royal pooches. That's why it's £245. I don't think it would be anywhere near that price. I love it. But it's a lot of money, isn't it? And I don't want to throw my money away. <laughs> Marjorie Cox and Joey. Right, I'll have a think about that. Stay. Let's see how Raj is getting on in Bramley. Well, this is an unusual item. I mean, I've noticed in the shop that Wendy's got lots of uh, Asian antiques, a lot of them from India as well. But this is a this is an African club, and uh, it's a tribal club. Clubs like this are known as knob kerries and were a traditional weapon used in southern and eastern Africa for hunting and fighting. And this is not like 19th century. It's in pretty good condition. Looks like it's never really been used, to be honest. I'm not sure what the wood is. It's some kind of African hardwood. A lot of collectors collect African tribal art, and if it is what I think it is, it, you know, it could do quite well. I'm going to speak to Wendy. Wendy? Yes, Raj? I may have found something. I noticed you've got £28 on the ticket. What would be your very best on that? Probably 18 I think, actually, that's a very fair and honest price. So I'm going to shake your hands at £18. Oh, thank you, OK. Raj. Good luck with it. There we go. Thank you. Let's hope the African club does well under the auctioneer's gavel. I am certain it will. Back with Margie now. Whilst we've been away, she's agreed £150 for that Jack Russell portrait. Honestly. You turn your back for one minute. So, Joey, for a few hours, you're mine. Come with me, let's go for a walk. Let's hope it makes a few pee at the auction. So what would you call a group of pestle and mortars? A gathering? A clutch? <laughs> because there's four here. <laughs> These are brilliant, obviously. They're really quite old. A lot of them are 18th century, that's probably early Victorian. They're indestructible, that's why they're still around. And of course, they're for crushing your herbs. They were for medicinal purposes, really. And how you remember whether it's pestle or mortar is, that I, how I remember, because I never can remember, is that the a mortar board you stick on your head. That's how I remember whether it's pestle or mortar. <laughs> oh. Just a passing comment. Now look at the size of this one. My word, this is a whopper. I can hardly pick it up. Look at that. Look at that. That's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Late 18th, early 19th century. If I drop that on my toe, goodness knows what would happen. That is amazing. That is lovely. This one is £130. Yeah. Lindy, how, you've got quite a lot of money on that. I actually could do you a storming deal on Storming. That. I could do that for £60. The worry always is that the pestle belongs to the mortar. It does. It's been signed. It's are they got both a signature signed? and both parts are signed. Where? Lindy, I've got it. You found it? Yeah, yeah it's there. That's wow. it. So yes. it's obviously German or something. Well, I can show you the mark on the bottom. Yeah. There. Yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. And that yes. matches that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good, yeah. because often they're matched up. She's a whopper. 50 quid by it? 55. Thank you. Cup your hands. Wow, that really is a storming deal. That's the whopping great pestle and mortar and that rather adorable portrait of Joey for a total of £205. I'd say that's a good morning's work by all accounts. Meanwhile, Raj has made his way to the outskirts of Lurgashaw. Here to learn about the ancient alcoholic drink of mead. He's dressed for the occasion because his first stop is to pick up the main ingredient, honey. You're right in there, Raj. He's making a beeline for aid purist Peter Wilding. Hello there. Hi, Raj. Hi, Peter. Good to it? meet you, yeah. You too. <laughs> Bees and me don't normally mix, so I'm fascinated to learn about it. I noticed when I came down that you were using that gadget with smoke coming out of it. What, what are you doing there? You smoke the bees before you open a hive because it stops them communicating by pheromones that someone's about to open the hive, and so it makes them behave calmly. 
I think you need to smoke them a bit more before I help them. Yeah, you I will. <laughs> Beekeeping was brought to Britain by the Romans over 2,000 years ago. Back then, they used straw hives known as skeps. The modern hive with removable frames was invented in 1890. It allows easy access to the honey without damaging the bee colony. Here we are. I just what, just lift it off. Is there any way that I should be doing this? Lift it off gently so, and then put it behind the hive. So that lid's just to keep the rain off the hive because one thing bees don't like is getting wet. Get an extra dose in the top of the hive and then I take the lid off. We've got 11 frames in, inside the hive and they've all got honeycomb on them. The bees live in the middle. How many bees, when this is full, would there be in this hive? Well, in the height of summer, there's 50,000. So if they get angry with us, uh, it's, not, it's not good news. This frame is heavy and it's full of honey. And wow. you can see it's all been sealed with wax. This frame weighs at least four pounds. So that's their winter stores. They're getting very inquisitive. They are. I think I'm going to put, okay, put yeah. it back now. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned about honey. Time now for a lesson in mead. And I've got a pot of honey for you from this year. It'll make you do some good mead. That's really kind of you. And I've not been stung. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Don't say it like that. Thank you so much. It's been a real education. Thank you. With honey in hand, Raj is headed a few hundred metres down the road to Blackdown Distillery, where master distiller Sarah Thompson is waiting. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Raj. Hi. Welcome. Guess what I've got? Oh, perfect. Do you want to come through and we start the process? Love to. Oh, Love brilliant. to. Come on then. In its most basic form, mead is made from honey, water and yeast which, if combined correctly, produces an alcoholic tipple. Sarah has been making the stuff for eight years, but its history is, of course, far older. Nobody knows exactly when mead was first discovered. However, we do know that mead is the first and oldest known alcoholic beverage. Mead was favoured by the likes of King Tut, um, the ancient Greeks, King Henry VIII, um, Elizabeth I, and, and, and evidence goes back further than that. For thousands of years, mead was believed to have health benefits. The ancient Greeks called it the nectar of gods, believing it to prolong life. In medieval England, mead was drunk after a wedding for a full moon cycle, or honeymoon, to bring luck. First of all, if you would like to open the honey and pour it into that jar for me, please. All of it? All of it, yeah. You can even have a little taste if you wish. That's delicious. Now in here we have warm water. Mm -hmm. And now I need you to give it a stir. OK. <laughs> a bit like making jelly, we're trying to dilute the honey. This is now known as the must. The must? The must. So what we want to do is to add the yeast to the must. That's it. And, and now we need to stir. So we've added the yeast mm -hmm. into the must, which t is now turning it into alcohol. Yeah, it's, it's giving the yeast that kickstart it needs. Put yep. the remainder into the demijohn. I need you to stir it one more time. OK. I liken it to baking a cake. Okay. Just getting all those ingredients all mixed together. This will be left for about six weeks. So have we got some that we may have prepared yeah. earlier yeah. to try? We've got plenty for you to try. Fantastic. So that is the process. So I've actually made a demijohn of mead. You have. Well done, that man. Time to see if it's all been worth it. That is delicious, I have to say. Delicious. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've tasted mead, but I guarantee you it's not the last. Oh, lovely pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Chin chin, you two. <laughs> Whilst Raj has been enjoying himself, how's our designated driver getting on? So I've just got to try and maintain my lead now. I'm 100 pounds ahead. Yay! <laughs> I know he's on the back foot, which is quite amusing. <laughs> <laughs> Gearbox, Margie! Tut tut. Margie's headed back across the border to Surrey in the direction of Hazelmere and aiming for the centre of town. To the Ark Stores, her second shop of the leg. She has just over £225 left and plenty of time to scope out a bargain. Now then. Nick. Yes, Margie. Native American, which I... is 
hot, isn't it? It must be the best part of 100 years old. Mm. There's a quality about it, and all of that there was hand, a quality. hand done. And these little beads are not plastic either. No, proper beads. Um, yeah. yeah. So what, what would it be for? You've got your little buttons that obviously fit there. So I've got a funny feeling it might be a sort of neck choker or choker. something. Just about fits. But maybe, actually, maybe... Yeah. Maybe that is what it is, and that would explain the length of these. Yeah. And it's sixty-five pounds. Is there any movement? I think you can twist my arm a little, Margie. Say forty-five. I think it's great, and I think for forty-five pounds, I'm going to have that. I think it could work for you, actually. Yeah. Oh, I hope so. Now, over your shoulder, what is this? It says on the ticket. World War II Sherman tank, heard about those. Well, Periscope. It, it, it may not be a thing of beauty, but, no, but it's, a useful... it's an extraordinary thing. Um, right. You look through here at yeah. the, um, the mirrored, through the mirrored window. And then you can see what's going on up it top. It feeds you the reality above your head. So that would fit. It'd be in front and he'd be. Would he be driving it? Oh, I've no, no idea. <laughs> Over 50,000 Sherman tanks were built during the Second World War, all fitted with periscopes like this. Why I think it's interesting, A, I've never seen one. B, it's sort of military interest. And C, you're just looking for something different to yes. auction. And you've got and £60 pounds on so it. It's not expensive. Really? <laughs> <laughs> How would 40 sound? I think I'll have that. Lovely. So I've okay. two things right. for £85. Oh, you've been very kind. Brilliant. To be a... Thank mm. you, Margie. <laughs> Even the buys come in twos at the Ark. <laughs> boom, boom. And two very, very different items to boot. <laughs> and Margie's £85 spending spree concludes the shopping for today. Now, did anyone bring a map? We're a little bit lost. We are, we are. We need to ask someone. Look, there's a couple oh, of tree surgeons there. Let's ask them. Well, they'll know, won't they? Yeah. OK, up you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'll wait for you. OK. I won't drive off. It won't be long. <laughs> Hi, fellas. <laughs> you don't know the way to Brighton, do you? you turn round. Yeah. Back to the main road, and it's signposted to Brighton A27. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Brothers, Sorry to disturb you. Us. Cheers, Sorry thank you. Oh, well, that was fun. Try not to get lost again, eh? Nighty night. Next day, our twosome are back on the road. And the top's off. Margie, another beautiful day. Hello. You had a big shopping day yesterday. I did. I did. Have you bought more things with lots of profit in? I thought I'd better play the game. Because I've got more money than you have. <laughs> oh, I'm richer than I you. I've got more money than you have. <laughs> so, yeah, I've bought four things, but you never know, do you? You, know, you, you always lead me into a sense of <laughs> full security. You always tell me that you've I've spent so that. much money on this and I'm, I'm going to lose money. And so far, all I've seen, the last two, you making money. I'm learning from you, Margie. You won't find a better teacher. Yesterday, eager student Raj bagged himself just one item, the African Tribal Club. Watch out, Margie. I'm coming back. Which means he still has a very healthy balance of £318 for the day ahead. Whilst Margie had a far busier day, snapping up the portrait of Joey, the pestle and mortar, the Native American choker and the Sherman tank periscope. I'm going to have that leaving her with just over £141. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. And there's the sea. Is it? No. <laughs> it's, <not>. it's trees, <laughs> that. It's trees. <laughs> OK, the sun is in my eye, OK? Easy mistake to make. <laughs> With Margie safely dropped off, Raj has headed to the coastal town of Hove. His first port of call today is the department flea market. And with over £300 at his disposal and such an eclectic mix of things to peruse, what could he find? Ooh, <laughs> any sunny and sure? 
this is a little bit unusual. It's brass and I believe it's a coal scuttle. And it's very unusual with this railing around the side here. And it's got these claw feet as well, which is a nice little touch. Uh, and it's, it's even got on the side here, it's got these nice copper rivets, which make it a little bit different. And I've never actually seen one like this before. It's definitely interesting, worth having a chat with shop owner Sophia. You've got £45 on the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, can I make you an offer? You can try. OK. <laughs> what about £20? Oh. I think we need to go up a little bit. OK. £25. Oh, go on. £25, I'm going to buy it. Go Thank on. you very much indeed. Excellent. Hopefully it won't scuttle your chances of a profit at auction. <laughs> Whilst you've got Sophia's attention, though, does anything else catch your eye? I found this antique stool. Yep. I mean, it's uh, early 20th century. It's upholstered. It's in pretty good condition. It's actually walnut. It's made of walnut. Okay. And the top comes off. <laughs> OK. And the top comes off. Careful. And it's in pretty good condition. I, do you know, it's probably got the original upholstery. Yeah. What could that be? I can do a special deal on that. Can you? £10. We've got a deal. Man. Fantastic. Lovely, go. thank you. The coal scuttle and footstool for a total of £35. Time to load up the 2CV, buckle up and get back on the road. Margie, in the meanwhile, is enjoying Brighton and the sea air on the promenade. But she's not here for a jolly on the pier and an ice cream. Oh, no, she's come to find out how, in 1883, the city embraced one man's electrifying vision of what the future could be. And right on time is Phil Lucas to tell us all about it. Hello, Margie. Lovely Hello, to meet Phil, you. Hello, Phil, and you too. This is the easterly end of the world's oldest operating electric railway, the Vox wow. Railway. So, for how did all this come about? Well, this is all the work of one man called Magnus Volk. Yeah. He was born in Brighton in 1851, as the son of a German clockmaker. Yeah. And from a very young age, he was absolutely fascinated by engineering and particularly electricity. He was the first person to put a telephone into his house in Brighton, and then he put the first person to put electric lights in Brighton. But he thought there could be something more, more purposeful with electricity. Yeah. So, he built this railway as a way obviously of moving tourists, which is fun, but to sort of showcase what the potential of electricity could be. Incredibly, the world's first public electric railway came just four short years after the light bulb was invented and was part of Magnus Volk's pioneering vision of the future. The demonstration of electricity's potential captivated the public as they watched the steamless train ferry passengers along the beachfront. So is this the original track? Is this how far they came? It's changed over the years. Yeah. Where we are now has been constant since around about 1901. But originally, it just ran between the aquarium yeah. and near the, what they used to call the chain pier, which was Brighton's first pier. So it's about a quarter of a mile. Do you think he was hoping that it would be used on the proper railways? I think that was part of the idea, yeah. yeah. He wanted to set this up as an experiment of what the future of electricity could be like. Right. See, yeah. if, if you got the train now from yeah. Brighton to London, yeah. you would have a very similar electric system to this. Yeah, so that's amazing. Yeah, it? so it worked. Yeah. Volk's railway experiment was a popular attraction from the start. So much so that in 1892, he set his sights on extending the line three miles east to the neighbouring town of Rottingdean. But the steep gradient of the proposed route made it wholly impractical. So we came up with another idea yeah. called the Pioneer, yeah. which was an incredible contraption, which was four legs, 43 foot high, supporting a cabin where passengers would sit. Oh, my goodness. And it was in the sea. So that would run by electricity along tracks at the bottom of the seabed towards Rottingdean, which is the next town. Nicknamed the Daddy Long Legs, the Jules Verne-esque Pioneer was so unusual it required both a train driver and a licensed sea captain whilst in operation. 
But how do they fund all this? Well, Magnus funded it himself. And of course, the railway itself was very, very successful. Yeah. So there was no reason to think this pioneer wouldn't be successful. Right. Uh, and it was uh, in terms of passenger numbers, but the elements made it quite difficult. Yeah. In the first week, yeah. there was a storm which virtually, you know, <laughs> blew it away. <laughs> and it took eight months before it was back on track. Oh, no. When we got to 1900, yeah. the council said, well, actually, we need this space because we're going to make sea defences. So, <gasps> but that, in some ways, is good yeah. because that then meant that the actual Volks Railway yeah. could run from here, our original terminus, right the way up to Black Rock where it runs oh, now. Right. So the Pioneer may have been no more, yeah. but we got a longer rail way out of it. Happy ending. Happy ending. Right. Thanks to Volk's determination to continue showcasing the power of electricity, the new line reached a mile and a quarter along the beachfront. Today, the very same cars continue to run over 135 years later. Now then, we couldn't let Margie leave without having a go, could we? All aboard! To the right of the box, you'll see the horn. To the right of the box. Hey! And then move that <laughs> gear stick into one. Oh! Hey! Hey! Hey, it's going quicker than I thought. I feel as I'm going to go off the rails. Oh, you won't. You'll be OK. <laughs> or have I gone off the rails before in my life? Oh, this is lovely. Stepping back in time, aren't we? You're doing a great job. Have I? Yeah. She's a natural. Volk's dream of an electric future is today a reality, with many trains following his pioneering example over 135 years later. Getting to the end of the line. That's it. Apply the brakes a little bit more. Phil, we did it. That is perfect. Well, I'll tell you something, it's a lot better than driving that Citroen 2C V that I've got stuck with. <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. Thanks. You, so nice to meet you. You're it's very great. welcome back anytime. Thanks. Bye. Now then, is that Raj kiteboarding? You can't beat a day like today. The sun is shining, we're at the beach, I'm looking out to sea, and I'm eating fish and chips. Margie, I wish you were here. Come on, Raj, this is no time for a battered cod. Yummy. Whilst Raj has been enjoying himself at the seaside, Margie has already made her way north to the small town of Stenning. She's heading for the last shop of the leg, Stenning Antiques. I've never been in this shop. What fun. With £141 still in her purse. Hello. Hello. Hi, you Ed? I'm Ed. Hi, Ed. Margie Cooper. Hi, Marjorie. So, I'm going to have a look round. Yes, have a look round. Yeah, well, that's... What's that? Oh, that little bone. Has that got dominoes in it? Yes, it has. Right, so it's bone, isn't it? Mm. Oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's marvellous. I wonder if they're all that... How many are there? So your it's gentleman 29. would put that in his pocket? Yeah. And take it down to the tavern. Mm. It's a little bit of damage there. Yeah. What a nice little collector's item that is. Oh, about 100 years old? Mm. Early, I'd say roughly Early about that. 20th century. And how much is it? 95. Mmm, <laughs> that's a bit... Mm. Heavy, isn't it? We're always open to an offer, madam. <laughs> well, I'll have a think. But okay. I still think it's a bit top yeah. heavy. All right, me? okay, yeah. yeah. There's still the entire shop to look around, but you'll soon have some company. A Citroen has just pulled up. Raj is here. Stand by. Oh, look at that. That's really nice, isn't it? That is a child's saddle rack. Early 20th century, and the use today would be something they put in the kitchen. Mm. Hang towels on it, it's decorative. And they're asking 45 quid. That's an honest antique, an honest country antique. I don't know whether to buy that or the, the domino thing. Whilst Margie has a final think about that, let's see if Raj has unearthed anything on which to spend his £283. These are really nice. These are old horn beakers, and they're made out, obviously, the horns of different animals. 
originally they started off for huntsmen that were hunting and they'd stop and they'd have a hip flask and they'd pour a little drink in there and they'd have a little drink while they were hunt out hunting. And now they make really good christening presents. This one is actually dated 1924 and it's got his name on it, W.H. Harris. I'm going to leave them because I don't think they're as commercial as they used to be, so I'm going to keep looking. Probably for the best. Now then, is Margie any closer to deciding which item to buy? Right. Isn't that a nice little country antique? It certainly is. So it's 45. Obviously, there's a deal there, is there? There can be a little deal, yeah. Yeah, how much could that be? £30. £30, right. But I do keep thinking about... The that. little yeah. mm, dominoes. Yeah. Have you had any thoughts? We could do 45. I'll go for that, then. OK. And thanks a lot. Thanks very much. That's great of you. Thank you. Uh, right. Excuse me, Margie. Yeah. yeah. You've been taking a long time over that. You have to make your decision really quickly. Why don't I you... really like that. Ed, what's the best you can do on that? Thirty pounds. Thirty pounds? Yeah, thirty you pounds. Sure? It's got to be. I'm going to shake hands with you. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you very Fantastic. much. Fantastic. We're going to Winchester, and there's lots of horse studs there down there. Is. It's absolutely perfect for where we're going to. I hope I make a profit. So Brilliant. You little cheeky monkey. Well, hang on a minute. Cheeky you monkey. had your chance. I waited in the wings. I did. I did. And I waited till you'd done the deal. I've changed my mind. Okay. You changed your mind. I wish you well, my friend. Thank you very much indeed. You're perfect my friend. Perfect for Winchester. I hope you make a lot of profits. Yeah. She's got her fingers crossed. Hasn't I've never had that happen in all my years on the road trip. Okay, that's be fine now. Ah, certainly a chancer. Margie bags the domino set for 45, and Raj snaps up the tack rack for 30 pounds. But he still has money burning a hole in his pocket. Here's a piece I think is very commercial. It's a really nice mannequin. This is a period one. It could be Victorian, but I probably think it's probably Edwardian. It's made of papier-mâché. Hasn't got arms, but that doesn't matter. I like it. Let's talk money with Ed. You've got £70 pounds on the ticket. Oh, yes. What could you do this for? Thirty-five. I'll tell you what, all right, because I wanted to offer 30 for it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you something, and if, you, if you're amazed by what I show you... OK. Right? I'll give you 30. If you're not amazed by it, I'll give you 35. It better be good. It better be good. I totally agree. It better be good. OK. OK? What's he got up his sleeve? Ed, I'm going to show you something, right? I've never seen this box before. No. You've got a red pack and a blue pack. Choose a pack. Right. Take them out. Uh-oh. Here we go. A trick. All I'm going to say to you is to say stop wherever you want. Stop. OK? I want you to take the top card and keep it to yourself. Have a look at it. Remember it? Yeah. There's the rest of the deck. I'm going to ask you to put it back in the deck anywhere you want. Okay. And just to make it a little bit more difficult, mm. I want you to shuffle them. OK. So that card is completely lost in the deck. I feel like Debbie McGee. OK, now, would you be amazed if I could make your card that you chose fly out of the deck? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Ready? What was your card? Seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. Amazing! I am so very impressed. At £30, we have a deal. We have a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eat your heart out, David Copperfield. There you go. By Jove, he's a talented man, this Raj. His magic touch means he bags the mannequin and the tack rack for a total of £60. With shopping concluded, it's time to grab your glamorous assistant and vanish. <laughs> like a rabbit out of a hat. We're off to Hampshire, to Winchester. Ah. Winchester Cathedral. You're making me sad. Hey, time for our songbirds to get some shut-eye. Welcome to the historic city of Winchester. Once the capital of Britain during the 9th century. Today, home to one of the largest cathedrals in Europe. And today is auction day. An ultimate auction. I know, exciting. What a lovely building, isn't it? Beautiful bit of Georgia. Are you going to have some luck today? Well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Come on, Margie. Think positively. Oh. After setting out from Bramley, our duo have motored their way around the country roads of Surrey and West Sussex before finishing up in Hampshire. Today, we're at Bellman's Auctioneers. On this leg, Margie spent a whopping £335 on five lots. 
This is really unusual, Margie. This is a choker of Native American origin. This should go online. I should think there'll be people interested in this. I hope it doesn't choke you, Margie. Good luck. Raj also bagged five lots, spending a modest £113, including that mannequin. What's he done now? <laughs> Is he looking for a girlfriend or something? <laughs> It's a useful item, dressmaker will buy it. But it's not very old, is it? I think it's quite new. Oh, look, my two favourite dummies together. <laughs> not bad, is it? Well, I don't think she's very old. It's Edwardian. Oh, does it fish? Maybe. Right. I'm, I, I'm going to leave you now, OK? <laughs> You've upset me. Look, you're going to make a profit. That's what it's all about. Play nice, you two. 40 in the room now, 45 in tonight. Let's see what auctioneer Ian Rushbrook thinks of their lots. 110, 120. I think my favourite item is the charred saddle rack. I've seen plenty of saddle racks in my time, but I don't think I've ever seen a child's one. It is very nice having the maker's name on it, because most of them are unmarked, and I think it's just got a lovely overall appearance to it. This has also attracted quite a number of bids already and so I think this should prove quite popular. I can't remember when we last sold a periscope, but certainly items from the Second World War do always attract a lot of interest and a lot of inquiries prior to the sale. Again, this should prove to be quite a popular piece. Today, Ian will be selling to bidders in the room, on the phone and online. Bums on seats, <laughs> it's about to begin. An ultimate sale. It is. Here we go, guys. Raj's stool is up first. Yes, here we go. Oh, that's Look, sweet. Sweet, isn't it? You see oh, now. Terrible. Yeah. I've got 35 bid on the internet for this already at £35. Next bid, 40 in the room now. Oh, there. my goodness. 45, 50 in the room, will you? Oh. 50, 55 internet. 55, 60, will you, in the room? Any further bidding, otherwise selling at 55. Crikey, that's a good start. Well done, you. I'm really pleased for you. Can you say that with a bit more feeling? <laughs> Opportunity now for Margie to grind you into the ground. I really Marshall like your wise. pestle and mortar. Yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? You should smash it. And £60 for this. £50 then. Oh, no. £40, any interest in this? Thank you, 30 I have at £30 oh, no. only. Any more? Selling at 30 then. Chin up, girl. The auction is still young. It's not good, is it? <laughs> Stop looking. There's a smile behind those eyes. No, there's no, not. There no, is no, there is a smile. No. <laughs> there's tears. There's tears behind these eyes. Tears of joy, methinks. Next is Raj's steal of a buy, the tack rack. I have to thank you for this because you rejected it I did. and I came in very quickly. You did. And I'm hoping that this will gallop away. Opening on the internet at £40. Is there any further bidding? Otherwise, I'm selling on the internet at £40. Well, that was short and sweet. Oh, that didn't really gallop away, did it? <laughs> no. No. It sauntered. A profit's a profit. The Sherman Tank Periscope is up next. The auctioneer like this. This either could go up or it could go down. <laughs> I don't know. I've got 35 bid, oh. 35 pounds. Thank for you. Bidding. Anybody else interested? Otherwise, selling to the main bid of 35 pounds. Blimey. Someone's got a bargain there. Oh, well, marvellous. Only a five I loss. Come on, Margie, stay positive. Next, Raj's coal scuttle. It's a bit different, I think it's... It is different. I think it's nice. I've got 30 on the internet to open on this. Oh, that's nice. And is there five for anybody else? 35, new place. Choose the next Ooh. bid. At £35, selling at 35 Another solid profit for Raj. Well, another tenner. Yep. Three hundred and fifty. Here, a tenner. Two hundred and fifty. I can open that. Two fifty. Right. Can Margie's Native American choker change her luck? I'm not sure about this. It's difficult to date them, isn't it? I have to be honest. I'm not an expert on this. I have thirty pounds on the internet for this. Oh. At thirty pounds. 
Oh, you better yeah. bring it at 35, otherwise we're selling at 30 oh, pounds gee. only. At 30. It's not your day today, Margie. What's happened to my magic touch? I don't know. What's happened to your magic touch? It's gone, isn't it? It's gone. <laughs> Raj used some magic to buy this next lot, the mannequin. This is the Mordian one. I don't think it is. Whatever. Whatever. will make a small profit. That's a late Victorian papier-mâché and wood mannequin. Yeah, late Victorian. Net bid at £35. Pounds. £35, you've got profit. At £35. Pounds. 40 I have at the back of the room. £45, pounds. we're back to the internet now at 45 Raj, you're on fire today. We've out. made 15. Well, small profits, you know. He's well, climbing. Well, you know, you know climbing. slowly but surely. He's coming for you, Margie. Time to see if you made the right choice with the dominoes. I like the best item. out of your, all your items. Do yeah, I really like this. And £50 for the slot? Oh, no, 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 don't start. 35 I have at £35. Any advance at £35? Oh. £35 only anymore, £40 in the room now. It's in the room then at £40 and selling. Oh, this isn't looking good for you, Margie. Well, another disappointment. Small disappointment. Thank God for small mercies, eh? Raj's African knob Kerry is next. Very collectible, these. I know they are. They are. And I've got an opening bid of £35 on this. Are you well in? There's 40 I have on the internet. <gasps> next bid's 45 in the room now. In the room wow. at the moment. Oh. In the room at 45. Well done, old Bean. Another smashing profit. It's a bit greedy there, Kerry. but... But, it's yeah. done well. Yeah, yeah it's done OK. Joey is Margie's Jack Russell portrait and a last chance to turn a profit. See, what did you pay for? 170, is there 180? 150. 170, any further bidding at 170? <laughs> Fifth Amendment. Nine five <laughs> and 60 pounds for this. 40 pounds then for somebody. Oh, no. Thank you, 30 I have. 30 pounds only. 35 now, 40. 45, 50. Any further bidding? Selling at 50. Oh, well, I'm having an awful day. I've just so lost a hundred pounds. Yes. Oh, Ouch, that hurt, poor Margie. Wretched dog. I've gone off Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. Here we go. <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting. Calculators are ready. Margie started out way in front with £431 in her piggy, but after an unfortunate auction, she loses her lead and a pile of dosh. She drops down to £248.24p. Raj, on the other hand, had a much more prosperous day. After all fees have been deducted, he still made £67 profit. That means he's back out in front and has just over £403 for the final leg. Well... Congratulations. Doesn't it make the competition really <laughs> exciting now? We've got one more auction to go. Yeah. Anything can happen. We're, I'm coming. You know, I'm going to get you. Good. I hope so. 